Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hot Pole Studios. I'm Adam Steele. This is Alex from Sander Circuitry. And that's Henning coming in from the toilet. And we're going to do something a little different today. Hi. Uh, that we've got this incredible pedal board with some of the most state-of-the-art you know, spaceship level rocket science and a base. Dun, dun, dun. But there is one pedal on here that is specifically designed for purpose, yes? Yep. So before I make any sound this, I'm going through the angle iron ball, but it sounds like this. clean and straightforward. So we have the Sono, don't we, which is the bass fuzz and preamp. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, let's start with the preamp side. Yeah, How, the timer uh, side. Yeah. yeah, we'll start there. How would you describe it? Is it uh, more like a kind of vintage style overdrive, clean boost. Um, so you've got, all you've got is a level gain and then a clean blend. Right. You can dial in as, as much as you want, but it'll get pretty hairy. Okay. It's mostly in that kind of, kind of middle ground of drive. It's a good place to start though, so let's let's hear that. That's nice. So Let's think. I would probably have just a little less drive than that before we press the other button. As low as it goes. <laughs> Maybe a little more than that then, just to, just to back it. Because then I can go. Yes, lovely. lovely. And then we've got the bit that Henning would hate, which is the fuzz. And this is where we get into my sort of territory. A heavy, heavy, heavy kind of fuzz again with a clean blend, um, but lets you get a little bit. There's more controls, so you've got some kind of spitty, uh, gated stuff that the rip knob, uh, rip knob adds, and the tone control that's obviously just like a really wide-ranging tone control. Right. Well, let's go for something thick and spitty. I'm working backwards, so forgive me. I might have to dial it in afterwards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's pretty extreme. I love it. So I, for, for what I would go for, I'd probably take the spittiness back a bit, mm -hmm. but otherwise, that's pretty good. And the preamp I'd probably live on all the time. Yeah. Just being a bass player, we like cymbal. <laughs> <laughs> but on top of that, we have what I would use if I'm getting really experimental, which is the top row. Mm -hmm. These are incredible boxes. I got to try the Duplo at the last 42 Gear Street and it made my eyes hurt because I was trying to work everything out in about four and a half seconds. <laughs> but it's, let's start with the Duplo. Mm -hmm. It's a delay with lots. Yes, yeah, so you've got eight, eight different delay modes, mostly housed around that uh, older or lo-fi kind of style, not really pristine, clean digital delay. So kind of more on the kind of murky and experimental side of things, I guess. I do like murky and experimental. So let's kick the preamp back on just so I've got something to there we go and take me through some of the sounds okay cool so start with the uh, more like analog uh, sure. one.
these soundscapes in there. That's awesome. And the other one that I would go for is the Junipero, which is the all the weird and wonderful modulation. Yeah, so probably more of a kind of chorusy thing for bass. I would say it's probably like a good. That's the starting place point. To start, yeah. And then anywhere where I want to upset Henning, I just keep going further and further into weird territory. <laughs> so let's start with. Uh... writing a song around that because that just gives you something different it's like the, what I call the black hole sun effect yeah is that if you find an effect that is so different that you go and identify with it it's not shameful to have something weird sounding it's all right everybody and that kind of I'm not going to use that in the middle of like a wedding gig just in the middle of uh, something like because that's a bit weird but if you're going a little further out there then that Are these analog but controlled digitally or all? No, so all, all three of these are all um, all digital effects. Anal analog uh, dry through with the mix control, so the, right. the dry signal isn't affected at all. Um, but they're, they're all digital effects. Um, this one mostly, like this kind of first patch, for example, is more built around the older analog chorus circuits. So kind of like a CE2 kind of vibe. But this, the control knob, which is different for each patch, this here specifically does just a detune, so you can kind of get that uh, frozen chorus sound where it's just DJing right. without running through an LFO. That's awesome. So that's more the kind of like the dimension type yeah, thing. Kind yeah. Of, yeah. That's, yeah, kind of, yeah. Funnily enough, I've got a dimension clone on my baseboard that we've been using in the jams at the guitar festival and Henning doesn't even know that it's on and it makes me smile. <laughs> well, let's go all the way into weird territory and try the tempo as well. So this is brand new, yeah? Yeah, so again, in the similar vein to the modulation and delay, it's a, basically a, a reverb version of that. So you've got all kinds of weird stuff. So more traditional spring hold, that kind of thing on, on one end, and then into the more shimmer, uh, really filtered, uh, lo-fi kind of stuff on, on the other side, on, on the other end of this, this knob. Awesome. So start with the, uh, start with the spring. <laughs> Considering that is digital, it's pretty close to what Ryan from 60 Cycle Hung calls the drip. That's got that kind of thing.
nice for that big atmospheric mad stuff. Right, so most of the bottom row doesn't really apply to this unless you are a masochist. <laughs> so we're going to from Mike from CGS's signature base, which I've been using, to TJS, the custom Tele 12. And this, I know I'm asking for trouble here, but again, when Henning says, but why, I know I have to use it. <laughs> We've still got the bass preamp on. So let's begin with something a lower gain. Like 12 strings, and that is still giving me all the detail. That's really nice. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So if we go up a notch, that so that's the uh, that's the overdrive. Yeah, that's the surplus. Yeah, which is like yeah the lighter, uh, tamer end of what we do. But um, yeah, if you want to go up, go on the next. Logical stage would be the cranium, which is like a rat based distortion. Let's give it a go. Sounds like there's some sort of modulation in there, but there isn't. It's brilliant. <laughs> but that that ratty style thing, that's a lot more expressive than most raps, I, I think, that you've got a lot more control there. Yeah, it's just the thing, like, trying to... It lets you dial out the uh, very, like, uh, obvious mid-hump, or you can accentuate it. So it depends what way you want to go. So the, the, the extra control is going to really let you tweak that, the tone as it goes into the pedal. Fantastic. Uh, next up, we've got two fuzzies that are similar but not the same yeah so these are both um, the American Geek and the Siva are both based around different variants of the Big Muff so one is the transistor version and one is based around the IC version uh, everything else tone stack uh, clipping diodes and stuff all, all the same so that's kind of the main difference just two different kind of flavours of, of the Big Muff cool um, well let's stick on the transistor one for a minute because what I really want to explore is the X control if that's on that one uh, yeah, so that's the diode yes, lift. Because yes. I've played with one of these and it makes a huge difference. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, if we start with that and then I'll dial it into sure. some of the other ones. makes a massive difference to the tone uh, there were a couple of sentences there that really stood out to me as ones I would like mm -hmm. but I suppose having that choice means if you like that big kind of mid scooped wall of death sound yeah, totally. there it is yes you've got both and so the op amp one is it a subtle difference a big difference uh, a fairly big difference I would say this is more of a whereas this is kind of a smoother sound this has much more of a kind of raspy uh, aggressive kind of distortion to it let's give it a quick go okay.
Sounds big, but you have to not stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a massive sound. Um, that's the uh, Smashing Pumpkins-y thing, isn't yes. it? Yes, yeah, yeah. I good. knew that, didn't hear it from Henning, honest. <laughs> um, so the Foxton Woods, I heard this one earlier. This is Bananas. Yeah, so classic 70s octave, uh, upper octave fuzz. Um, switchable, so you can use the fuzz just on its own or switch the octave in on top. Right. Um, well, talking of the two button the two buttons on each pedal uh one of them on most of them aside from this one is the blast mode yeah so on a couple of them it's a little bit different so the surplus and this one have a different function but on on almost all the others uh the, they have a blast switch which basically swaps the volume control from the level pot to the blast pot and also bypasses the gain control so you can set it up basically as like a, a preset so you have one that's lower gain and you can switch on the higher gain mode cool well, let's try this Foxton Woods okay. and see how it sounds with ridiculousness. <laughs> mental and that is for that solo where you just want to kill everybody rip their faces off yeah and so we've got the silicone uh cyclone cyclone um yeah spelt strangely i know um, this is one of our right one of our now. first pedals actually um ah. but now in its new format it was one of the first pedals we ever brought out right um in its original format and it's been through about five or six variations but i'm sure this will be the last version so. does that mean josh scott is going to have six different versions <laughs> hopefully <laughs> um yeah but crazy oscillating sub octave synth kind of thing um crazy and and it, and in between i'm in <laughs> let's do it <laughs> goes mental and so yeah that's so it's like fuzz face with the fuzz on a million yeah basically yeah love it <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's the thing where the fuzz face has got a volume knob which is useless and the fuzz knob which is useless because it goes on full this has control of everything yeah it kind of basically these controls kind of break the circuit if you like which is where you get those weird octave glitches and stuff like that come yeah. from, which can be useful in Certain context, I suppose. Yeah, I, I find it's interesting because a lot of what I do is I reamp stuff for people that have already played it. Mm -hmm. And if it's a bit sterile and a bit boring and it's just the same old amp sound, throw something crazy in there and just let it do interesting things in the gaps and the silences. And nine times out of ten, the bands respond with, oh, that's great, where did that come from? And yeah, those inspiration moments really do work. So, yeah, I know there are a lot of people, I mean, it's a, it's a huge market for pedals, right? There are so many people who are like, I want simple, and then there are people who are not. Yeah. Like, I want control. And I'm one of those people. I like to have ultimate control of everything and then never touch it again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so these are the new ones that are at the bottom, right? Yeah, so these two um, aren't out yet. So the Terra Firma and the Cafetier. Terra Firma is uh, more of a, it's a power amp distortion, so more aiming at that kind of down-tuned, stonery rock kind of uh, vibe. And the Cafetier is a harmonic percolator-based fuzz, so kind of does distortion and overdrive things as well, but it's kind of a very spitted, spitty kind of, Gated, very specific mm. sounding fuzz. Awesome. And that one is inspired by uh, 
the whole Steve Albini for fan base. Yeah, right? based because based, based on me, he's the kind of guy that made the original harmonic percolator like famous. So we've kind yes. of taken that circuit and basically taking it as far as you can kind of go with it. Really. I wonder where you got that information, Adam. <laughs> I know who he is. He recorded Nirvana's In Utero album, Henning. <laughs> ah, so he's bad at his job. On purpose, yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so let's try the terra firma and get yeah, some yeah. real rock and roll going. sounds big and uh, just to remind people if at points it sounds like there's an octave in there I'm playing a 12 string but the fact that I can hear them means it's doing its job fairly clearly mm. which is good work and let's let's crack on the cafeteria yeah, let's do, right. yeah, right. why not let's see what we can do <laughs> cleans up really nicely it does but when you hit it it's got something different from the all of the rest mm -hmm. and that and different from a driven amp which is something i'm looking for because um everybody's got a million ds1s and a million tube screamers and we don't need more of them but we do need more interesting stuff so there we go um xander circuitry alex thank you very much no Thank you, Michiel, for uh, switching. Thank you, Henning, for heckling. What a pointless video! You're Twelve a, string fuzz! You're a pointless video. We're trying to create a point of reference for the viewers. What's your freaking point of reference? Well, I started with a bass and then fuzz. Nobody needs that! Well, nobody's doing that. Now maybe they will. Ha! Ah, inspiration. Adam was at the end! of Henning's video. Thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Hey everyone, that might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server. Link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hot Pole Studios. See you there.